back. You know, I love to go swimming at the pool. I could just float there and relax all day. But I also love a good cannonball. That's a good way to make some waves. But today we're talking about a different way of making waves. We're talking about making a difference for the people around us with the way we live each and every day. We can do that only with the help of God's Holy Spirit who lives inside of us when we give our lives to Jesus. Remember, what you do today can change the world around you. And we have so many opportunities to make waves in the way we treat other people through the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. And today we're going to look at another way we can make waves. It might be something you'd least expect, but first, we've got some time to play a game. Come on! Hi, Asha! Hi, Busa! Hi, everyone! So I've designed a word search for you all today. You need to have a look at the scrambled words and try to figure out the fruits of the spirit that we've learned about so far. Plus one extra, the fruit we're gonna learn about today. That's so cool. Well done, Busa. Come on girls and boys, let's try and find all the fruit of the spirit that we've learned about so far. So here we go. All right, what do you guys see? Hmm. What has Busa designed for us? I see, there's love. Okay, now let's look for joy. Okay. okay, where's joy? There it is. Well done everyone, you're doing great. Okay, let's look for peace. Okay, how about we look for boys and girls? There it is, well done. Love, joy, peace. Our next one is patience. Let's look for patience. Um, there it is, well done, you found it. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Now we're looking for kindness. Can you see kindness in the scrambled words? And I think I see it. There it is. Very good. Okay, now we're looking for goodness. Where is goodness? Uh, there it is, you found it. And I think we just have two more. Faithfulness. Where is faithfulness? There it is. Well done, everyone. Now we've got one left. The fruit we're going to learn about today. What could that be? I think I see something over there. It's gentleness. Well done, everyone. You found all the words. Yes, good job, girls and boys. You even found out what we're learning about today. Are you ready for your story? I know I am. Let's go. Today, we're looking at another important way that we can make waves. What we're talking about today is something that Jesus was known for. And with the help of God's Holy Spirit, it's something we can live out too. Are we talking about gentleness today? Yes, we are, Busa. You know what? As Jesus traveled teaching and healing people, crowds gathered everywhere he went. Lots of people gathered around, some people to hear what Jesus had to say, some maybe to see someone get healed. Others, unfortunately, were there to keep an eye on Jesus as they looked for ways to trick him or try to make him look bad. That's not very nice. I know, Busa, it wasn't. But today's story takes place while Jesus was traveling and he came across one of those large crowds. Now, as I tell this story, everybody, I'm going to need some help from all of you. We're going to play a familiar game called What Happened Next? Everybody say, what happened next? What happened next? That's right. I'm going to give you a question with some options. A, B, or C. And I would like you to tell me what you think happened next in this story. This time, you'll use your right hand to tell me whether you think it's A, using a fist, or B, like this, or C. Are you ready? 
Yes, I'm ready. So A, B, or C. That's right. Let's do that one more time, boys and girls. Let's practice. A, A B, B, or C. C. That's right. So, as I said, Jesus was out and about and he was ready to heal people and meet with the people. And there was a huge crowd of people wanting to see Jesus. Take a look. Wow, look at all these people who came to hear what Jesus had to say. I know, right? But on this particular day, the people brought their children to see Jesus because they hoped that Jesus would pray for them and bless them. Look, there's Jesus. Let's take the children to Jesus so he can pray for them. Oh, look how precious these children are. That's so nice. I know, that's so special. But this brings us to our first question, everybody. What do you think the disciples, Jesus' friends, did when these children were brought to Jesus? What happened next? Did they A, everybody hold up A, help the children climb onto Jesus' lap? Or B, high five the parents and clear the way for the children to see Jesus? Or C, did they stop the children from seeing Jesus? What do you think? Use your hands to hold up the answer you think is correct. Is it A, B, or C? Good guesses, everyone. Let's read what really happened. Busa, please, will you read it for us? Sure. Mark 10, verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus. They wanted him to place his hands on them to bless them, but the disciples told them to stop. Whoa. Guys, if you guess C, then you're correct. Unfortunately, the disciples actually stopped the children from coming to see Jesus. Wait! Stop! Jesus is too busy. Don't bring your children to him. Stay back! Oh no! Why would the disciples do that? That's so mean. I know. They probably thought that Jesus was too important to be troubled with children. I mean, Jesus had important things to do and people to talk to. Maybe they thought that he didn't have time for children. But that was not true. What do you think happened next, everybody? Listen closely and see which answer you think is correct. Do you think that A, Jesus just kept teaching and healing people and everyone eventually went home? Or B, Jesus told his disciples to let the children come and see him? Or C, that Jesus actually thanked his disciples for keeping the children away from him? Mm. What do you think, everyone? Was it A, B, or C? Let's see those answers, everybody. Very good guesses. Now let's see what actually happened. Busa, please read for us the next part of the story. Mark 10, verse 14 to 15. When Jesus saw this, he was displeased. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. The kingdom of God belongs to people who are like these little children. I tell you the truth, you must accept the kingdom of God as a little child accepts things, or you will never enter it. Then Jesus took the children in his arms. He put his hands on them and blessed them. Whoa, so if you guessed B, you're right. Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. Yes, Jesus was so gentle with the children. He told his friends, no, let the children come to me. In fact, the Bible actually says that it really upset Jesus that the disciples even tried to stop the children from coming to him. He said, don't stop them. Then he invited the children to him, picked them up and prayed over them and blessed them. So he literally did this. You see, during that time when Jesus lived, children weren't always seen as important by adults. The disciples thought that Jesus wouldn't want to be bothered with children because they thought surely he'd want to only spend his time teaching adults, but they were wrong. Jesus showed his disciples and the people in the crowd that day that children were important and valuable. Jesus was gentle with the children. He was kind to them. He took time to hold them and give them attention even though he was surrounded by a large crowd of adults. I love that about Jesus. 
Me too, Musa. I really love that. That's the way Jesus treated all people, not only children. Jesus treated others with gentleness. With his actions, Jesus showed people that he cared about them. He showed people that they were worth his time and attention. And that's something we can do today, everyone. We can make waves by treating people with gentleness. We can do that with the help of God's Holy Spirit. And you know what? That brings me to my last question. It's not what happened next, it's actually what happens next. Boys and girls, what can we do to treat others with gentleness? Think of your family members, your friends. Think of the people you see every day, even if you don't know them very well. What are some ways you can be gentle with them? When we treat people with gentleness, like Jesus did, we show them that they are important to us and valuable to God. We show them that we care about how they're doing and how they feel. We can make waves through gentleness. When Jesus welcomed the children, picked them up and blessed them, he made it clear to his followers that every single child is valuable to God. Jesus also showed that we can be strong and gentle at the same time. It's not that being strong is being tough and being gentle means being weak. No, no, no. Jesus actually showed that it takes a lot of strength to be gentle. Here's what we need to remember today. God can give you the strength to be gentle. With help from God's Spirit, we can treat people the way Jesus did. We can make waves with gentleness. Let's pray and ask God to help us with that. Yes. Father God, thank you for this amazing example of gentleness from Jesus' life. Jesus knew that the children were just as important as anyone else, and they are still important to him. Jesus, you listen to us, hold us, and always have time for us. Please help us be like Jesus and show people that they matter to us and to you. Give us the strength to be gentle. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. bottom line one more time girls and boys God can give you the strength to be gentle well done everyone and let's remember that our memory verse teaches us that it's Jesus who works in us through his Holy Spirit to make us more and more like him so Jesus can give us the strength to be gentle let's say it together everyone yes God is working in you to help you want to do what pleases Him. Then He gives you the power to do it. Philippians 2 verse 13. Great work, everyone. Have a wonderful week as you impact the world around you with gentleness like Jesus. Salani gashe mangani. Bye.